Aum. Sangsara swapna tulyohi, raga dvesha disankulaha, svakale satya vadbhati, prabhode satya sadbhavet. Sangsaraha, the world. Svapnatulyaha, like a dream. He, verily. Ragadvesha adi sankulaha, full of attachments, aversions, etc. Svakale, in its duration. Satyavat, to be real. Bhati, appears. Prabhode sati, when awake, asat, unreal, bhavet, appears. The world, filled with attachments, aversions, and the like, is like a dream. It appears to be real as long as it continues, but appears unreal when one is awake. Namaste. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Said, even children know this life is not real. It is a dream. How is it a dream? It comes and goes. Huh? The shloka says, when we wake up in the morning, we look back on our dreams at night and say, oh, that wasn't real. That was just a dream. Isn't it? So in the same way, when this life is over, or when we attain enlightenment, <laughs> we look back on this conditioned existence the whole thing is just a dream. For the same reason that the dream at night appears unreal in the morning, this life also appears unreal as soon as we're out of it, whether we leave it through death or through enlightenment. There's a nice quote about this in the Aitreya Upanishad. Having split up this very end, he entered through this door. This entrance is known as Vidrithi, the cleft entrance. Hence it is delightful. Of him there are three abodes, three states of dream. This one is an abode, this one is an abode, this one is an abode. This is pretty esoteric. He's talking about the Creator, when he had created human beings, the living entities, he was thinking, now, how should I enter in? And there were only two places left, the feet and the head. The feet were already being used by prana. Prana was entering in from the earth. So he said, all right, I'll enter in from the head. And he made a hole right where the uh, hairs are parted on the back of the head. And this is known as Vidriti, the delightful one. Because why? The self, with a capital S, enters into the body and then passes down through the Sushumna nerve into the heart, which is his abode. And thus it is said that the heart space is actually bigger than the outer space seen by the external senses. Why is that? Because the heart space is the space of the self, and the self is infinite. So these three states of consciousness, waking, dream, and deep sleep, are actually all dreams. Why is that? Because they are conditioned. They are temporary. They come and go. You wake up in the morning, 
and you think, oh, this is real. Then you go to sleep at night and you dream and you think, oh, this is real. <laughs> Last night I had a dream. I was with Shiva and we were going to this uh, feast of the devotees. And everybody was gathered around eating and like that. And I was asking him, well, who has organized this? And how is it maintained? Is it a, a collective? Is it a, a commune? Or is it some individual, some wealthy person sponsoring it? You know, how is it made? How is it done? And he just remained silent. Because the answer is, dude, this is a dream. <laughs> it's not real. And neither is this waking state. Because when we enter sleep, the waking state and the world and the senses and the body and everything disappears. How can it be real if it's only temporary? That's the same criterion we use to dismiss the dream as being unreal, isn't it? That, oh, when I woke up, it disappeared. But when we go to sleep, the whole world disappears. <laughs> in a subsequent verse, it's going to compare the world to the foam in the surf. When a wave breaks in the surf on the beach, millions of bubbles of foam are created. But wait a minute. These bubbles are nothing but water. And they last for a few seconds or a few minutes, and then they burst, and they go back into being water. The only difference between water and bubbles is name. Name and form. It's the same substance, just in a different form, which is given a different name. Bubbles, <laughs> instead of surf or water. So in the same way, all the objects that we perceive in waking consciousness are simply different names for the same thing. Brahman. Brahman the self is the reality. These different names and forms that appear temporarily and then disappear again, being absorbed back into Brahman, are unreal for the same reason that a dream is unreal. So don't think that this waking consciousness, Jagrat, is reality and dream and deep sleep are unreal. No, they're all unreal. <laughs> Only Brahman is real. Only Turiya is real. Because Turiya consciousness is present at all times, during all the other states of consciousness, and during all different conditions of life, waking, dreaming, sleeping, birth, death, reincarnation, in between life state, so on and so forth. And if we get liberation, even then, Turiya is there. Turiya is Brahman. Brahman, or Turiya, is awareness of awareness. That's how it manifests in our experience. So, Turiya, then, is the object of self-realization. That state of consciousness that never changes. We talked before about how consciousness is like a mirror. Well, Turiya is that mirror that reflects everything, including the other states of consciousness. Because those states of consciousness being conditioned are only temporary. They are only a modification of the original consciousness, which is Turiya. Actually, Turiya never changes because it's Brahman. The modification is simply a covering. We've talked about many times the Upadis. 
So even God, Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, so many other gods, are simply coverings, upadis. Uh, this specific upadi is called ishatvam. Just like the covering that we have is called jivatvam, thinking that I am an individual living being who is born and dies and takes birth again and again in samsara and suffers and enjoys my karma due to the reactions of my past activities, etc., etc., etc. That's just name and form. That is just a covering on the actual substrate, which is Brahman. <laughs> I just thought of a cartoon that I saw years and years ago, back when I was a hippie in, in Haight-Ashbury, San Francisco. That's where the whole hippie movement got started. Anyway, there's one shop uh, run by a Russian family that sells piroshkis. And piroshkis are these delicious pastries and a very nice a dish. Um, and it was famous among the hippies, right on Haight Street, right near Golden Gate Park. And anybody who was anybody in the hippies' uh, culture could be seen there at one time or another. Anyway, this cartoon takes place in the piroshki shop. There are these three hippies sitting in a booth eating piroshkis. And one hippie is talking about Brahman, the self, is all one. And when you realize it, then the individual disappears and merges into the oneness of the universe. And like this, as he's saying this, he's, he gradually fades out. <laughs> and finally disappears altogether. The other two hippies look at each other, and they go, one goes, dude, had a beautiful head. The other one goes, can I eat his piroshki? <laughs> See, if you actually realize Brahman, the phenomenal world disappears. Not that you disappear, but the world disappears. Then how is it, one might ask, that even realized people are seen to have a, a body and senses and they move around and do things and say things? Huh? How is it possible if they don't perceive the phenomenal world? And the answer is, we perceive what other people, what conditioned or unenlightened people think of as the world or reality as an illusion based on Brahman, and that only Brahman is real. So, yeah, we can still act in the illusion just like we can act in a dream at night, even knowing that it's a dream like during lucid dreaming, we can still act in the dream as the dream self without breaking the dream because of our knowledge that, hey, this is a dream. This isn't real. So we could think of it like a movie. A movie is projected in the theater on a screen. And then when the movie is over, lights come up and the screen is there, unchanged, no matter what kind of action happens in the film. The same is true of Brahman. When this life is over, or when we attain enlightenment, we see just the same thing, Brahman, unmodified, unchanged, as the screen, and the life as the temporary actions and reactions and it's all simply due to name and form. Aung Tetzet. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>